pray them. Pastor Catherine Weathers, from the Pastor Catherine Weathers Show, thank you for joining me on today. I'm so happy that you did not think it robbery. Well, our title or theme for the day is 11 signs that you are experiencing a spiritual awakening. 11 to let you know that you are experiencing a spiritual awakening. Basically, a spiritual awakening is happening each moment we make a choice. However, one day a big opportunity for awakening occurs that will change the past, the present, and the future. When the choice is made to advance beyond the old beliefs and patterns, triggers and clues emerge that are signs of spiritual awakening. I didn't know that. That is definitely happening to me and has been happening to me for a while now. What about you? A spiritual awakening is happening all around us and within us all the time. The world is becoming a better place to live. More and more people are given the chance for a spiritually awakening every day. They choose not to be asleep and miss their whole lives. This awakening of our connection to divine energy happens differently for everyone. For some people, it can be a slow and steady process, while for others, it is a spontaneous spiritual awakening. Although it can be hard, the efforts deserve the price. Signs that you are experiencing a spiritual awakening. Number one, you question yourself who you are. One of the main things we begin to question in our spiritual awakening is who we really are. Through various teachings and information available in books and on the internet, we get clues to how to go within. Now, when I talk about books, I'm also talking about education because when you go to school, you have to read books to go to the higher level of education, right? Okay. By going within, we realize that we are an infinite being having a physical experience in a human body. I want to list 12 symptoms of spiritual awareness. And before I do that, let's define the word symptom. A symptom is a change in the body, indicating its health or disease state. Symptom. Okay? Now I know we're discussing 11 signs of spiritual awareness, awakening. But what about 12 symptoms of spiritual awakening? One, an increased tendency to let things happen rather than make them happen. Two, frequent attacks of smiling. Three, feeling of being connected with others and nature. Four, frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Five, a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than from fear based on past experiences. Isn't that wonderful? Six, an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment. I love that one. Seven, a loss of ability to worry. Eight, a loss of interest in conflict. Nine, a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of others. 10, a loss of interest in judging others. 11, a loss of interest in judging self. 12, gaining 
the ability to love without expecting anything. 12 symptoms of spiritual awakening. That feels good. What do you think? The biggest realization is a spiritual awakening involves remembering that we have always had a connection to our creator, but it has been veiled from us by a group of beings that wanted to control us. Then we realize that there is not only a connection to our creator's source, but we then gain an understanding of what it means to be a holographic spark of that source. And brothers and sisters, believe it or not, this is so true. I have a man um, in his 60s who thanks me for assisting him in the real realization that for years the Holy Spirit was with him directing him but he didn't know it was the Holy Spirit and so today I'm here to say the same thing to you when you hear that inner small voice say to you go left not right that is the Holy Spirit your inner spirit speaking to you. Amen. The understanding that you are a factual of an omnipotent creator being changes everything because accepting who you are reflects the love of your creator. It mirrors back unconditional love and allows both you as an individual and the creator, as an infinite being, the understanding of identity. We must know who we are. We must know how important we are. As a woman, our gender is so prominent, we could wrap rings around our male counterpart. This is why I choose to be honest and open, be loving and kind, and not to use, manipulate, or abuse any relationship that I'm in. Why? Because in the end, you reap what you sow. Second, you question yourself why you are here. Once we have begun to realize who we are, we are drawn to a question why we are here. The life purpose is different for each individual, however. We begin to search for soul groups that have similar likes as we do. Some people are attracted to the ET Slash planetary groups, while others are attracted to the meditative slash spiritual things. Ultimately, these groups are the same thing packaged differently and are great tools to connect with like-minded individuals. We begin to remember that we made agreements to mirror our life purposes to other or to one another. This is why some men end up in a revolving door being incarcerated in prisons and jail because they made that decision to hang out with those type of people. That's all I'm saying. I became a nurse because I made a decision well, my mother told me when I was a kid I would make a good nurse. So when I was in my teens, I started looking in the newspaper for a career and saw that nursing always had an opening. So that's what made me go 
gear myself to nursing. But basically, I don't know if I told you this story, I like law better, but I only knew about criminal law and I could not find myself getting a criminal off and then later finding out that he really raped somebody and I helped him get away. So, um, law was out of the question. Okay, so it also goes with your moral value system, whatever your career choice it may be. Okay, my brother chose to be a thief. And choosing a criminal activity, always remember you shorten your lifespan because you can either be incarcerated or killed. I mean, it doesn't matter what career you're in. You can be killed being a teacher and then crossing the street, you know, at an early age. But choosing a criminal activity, you know, people be shooting at you um, more so than um, being a doctor. Or, okay. So living out our life purpose is one of the most fulfilling things we can do. It is on the minds of most all spiritually awakened people. People often make finding their life purpose more complicated than it needs to be. Many times the answer has been in your life all along, but your energy was not directed towards it. Doing what makes you feel happy without harming another person is a big clue towards your life purpose. For some people, they like action. Again, stealing cars may make you happy, but it's in the same sense, it hurt other people. So that's not a good career choice. That's what I'm saying. And that's the only example I'm going to give you. Three. You find yourself drawn to inspiration and personal development. During your spiritual awakening, you are being guided towards your best self. Self-actualization. I love that word. Who we are and who we are going to be can be seen in our daily habits. As we are drawn to the light, we look to surround ourselves with inspiration, positive behavior, and personal development activities. Amen. We're talking about 11 signs that you are experiencing a spiritual awakening. This could be in the form of physical or spiritual. For example, you may be drawn to reading self-help books, practicing yoga, meditation, praying, personal development, seminars, running, walking, going to church, listening to audio books, etc. Number four, your life turned upside down. Once we realize that we are spirit living in a physical body, we suddenly see that we live in a world where everything is backwards and upside down. We begin to write things and withdraw our energy from the system that has been created to enslave and control us. We begin to be able to read the secret code around us in symbols and language that is embedded with trickery and magic spells that do not have our best interests in mind. We learn how to offset this black magic with white magic and begin to think for ourselves with clarity and purpose. I know it sounds horrible. But brothers and sisters, it is so true. 
even for Christians who try to hide. <laughs> oh God, thank you, Jesus. But yet, what some people call black magic and white magic, we call good and evil. Number five, you begin to experience synchronization. Synchronize. Synchronicity are a clue that a person is on the highest path. They may come through a repeated catchphrase or word that you see several times a day or even throughout an extended period of time. Oftentimes, a person will happen to glance at a clock at just the right moment where 1111 appears or a derivative of it like 222, 333, etc. Things begin to unfold in our lives seamlessly and we may experience precognition and deja vu more often. How many people can admit that happens to them. Eventually, we learn that our reality is a malleable matrix comparable to a television program. If we do not like what we see, we learn to change it by changing the frequency or channel. Meaning, change your behavior, change your surroundings. So people end up changing their jobs. Moving to a different state or country. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't because it's an inward change that must be done. You can't run away from yourself. Number six. You lose a lot of people in your life and gain a few very important new relationships. As the spiritual awakening processes, the creative energy we are made of vibrates at a faster rate. This particle acceleration changes how we affect others and may even make people uncomfortable that have yet to begin this process. We find that some people are forced away from us because their defense mechanisms kick in and their ego creates an excuse for them to not want to be around us anymore. I know that's right. It happens to me all the time. I can get paranoid about people trying to use me or abuse me. And then I'm about, goodbye, what about you? I want you to be honest with yourself on today. This is about you. This is not about me. But I use me to give you examples. I'm not using me to brag or boast. Because there's nothing about me that I need to boast about. Okay? As we look back, we vaguely remember those who have fallen away. Awakening and advancement is a choice that not everyone will make, but those that do begin close-knit relationships based on trust. When I came out of the military, all my comrades that I was in boot camp with and my MIT training, my medical training, I lost their numbers and we exchanged numbers before we left and today I'm saddened because I lost their numbers. As soon as I got home. So some relationships are not meant to be because I realized 
that if those people were meant to be in my life, there would be a connection. Okay? And I'll use this one gentleman who we were in the military together in the same unit and we lost track of each other for 25 years and then one day I went with a friend to see a program and the person was in the program. Look at life. Let's give an example. Nothing more. Due to the universal law of vibrational attainment, our vibrational level will naturally attract those of the same level to us like magnets. Since the percentage of people on the planet who have awakened at this time is less than 51%, we may find ourselves suddenly moving for a new job or perhaps we follow a dream that we have always had to live in a certain location where our soul may have the opportunity to appear in our lives. That's something good for some of us. Seven, you have increased self-talk and or talks with your creator. Although we don't all admit it, to some degree, we all do a little self-talk. It helps us to make sense of what is going on. At times, we can be our own therapist. It's actually very healthy because only you truly know what you need. It's an illusion that we think we need to ask someone outside of ourselves. Well, many people are looking for life coaches today, personal counselors, or what they were called back in the day. If you're going through a spiritual awakening, you'll find yourself doing even more self-talk. When you are alone, you may be chattering away with yourself for minutes at a time, maybe even more. It's okay. You aren't crazy. A new level of communication is taking place within you. You are allowing yourself access to your higher self, the part of you that truly knows all the answers to your own path. This is the extension of you that is connected to divine energy. And many of you don't even know it. The best thing to do is to continue to allow it. The conversation will increase and they will become more fluent, more coherent, and more insightful. If you find yourself getting philosophical, heck, write it down or record it and listen to it later. Free Highly insightful therapy at its best. Number eight. You'll realize love is the basic building block. How many people know that right now? One of the highest accomplishments in a spiritual awakening is peeling back the layers of protection around our heart. For most people, this lifetime has been full of heartbreak, whether it is from a relationship gone bad, a best friend betrayal, or even a child leaving home for college. Positive occurrences include the birth of a child or finding a healthy relationship that allows growth together as you share the spiritual awakening path. And all of these, the good and the bad stressors are just that, stressors, and give you a stress level. Eleven signs that you are 
experiencing a spiritual awakening. Any of this familiar so far? The ability to attract the right partner or soulmate begins with doing the work of loving yourself for who you are. A chain reaction of events will occur that will bring up stuck energy that can be cleared in order to prepare yourself for a healthy, loving relationship. It tickled me to see um, famous people who are in relationships. And you can look at them, you can tell their relationship is not the best, but they choose to hold on to the person because they've been in this relationship, been in a relationship for over a period of time. The sad part is, when you look at them, you know that eventually that relationship has to go. And I, I can, and, and, and as you can see it. You don't, what do you say to the person? There's nothing you can say to them because you just leave it alone. You can pray that they stick together, they work it out, you know. But again, the best thing will happen for that person. Trust and believe that. I've had to learn that so they can move on and fulfill the destiny and purpose that God has for their lives. Amen. So this period of time has been called the dark night of the soul. If you had already found your soulmate before your spiritual awakening, then you find yourself in a really good position to have someone who will support you while you do your inner work. If they're not your spiritual soulmate, you again will find yourself separating because you guys will be in two different places. I got to keep it real, brothers and sisters. I got to give you the positives and the negatives, okay? Whether we realize it or not, we affect everyone around us in our proximity. We are all in a symbiotic relationship of loving each other at a soul level. And when it becomes a conscious awareness practice, it is magnified beyond expression. The effects you have on someone else's vibration may not seem positive in the beginning because a person reality may begin to fizzle apart just like it did for you. One day soon, everyone who awakens will look back and realize that the domino effect of the vibration of love is what changed the world. And that effect can be positive or negative too. You have some people come around you and they're so clumsy. That's the effect you have on them. Nothing ever seems to go right for them with you. The magnetism is so strong. Others, you may feel bored. Someone else, you may feel too much excitement. Okay? This is how you need to start looking at relationships with the understanding that the right energy, when you find a relationship with the partner with the right energy, you both will balance each other out and positive things start happening. It's not just good things or bad things. It's a balance of the good and the bad. And you guys will learn how to maneuver between the two. But if you're in a relationship and you're constantly being bombarded with negative energy, um, the person's mother don't like you, or uh, the person has children who don't like you, you know, you need to think about this 
do you want to be in such a hostile relationship? Because eventually the hostility can take a toll on you in the long run. Okay, when I say you, you and the relationship, you buy, you guys can get married and then end up in a divorce because it's a rippling effect. Okay, and you need to be able to move to the next level, number nine. You become the calm during the storm. By realizing that we accomplish a spiritual awakening in this lifetime, we move from survival and fear to forgiveness and love. When we release the fear of survival and dying, it creates a space within us to create our future while changing our past. This unusual creates a longing to be of service to others. Teaching, sharing, loving, and healing becomes our new goal and we long for someone, everyone, to wake up and smell the roses. Number 10, you experience unusual sleep patterns. Some people who are experiencing a spiritual awakening awakening have trouble falling asleep what is going on inside keeps you awake it's a burning desire and some people know how to direct that energy while others aren't sure and this is what keeps you awake at night most report that they either have trouble falling asleep or they awaken at 2 and 4 a.m Many people tell me three a.m. If you're experiencing unusual sleep patterns, it's okay. Just don't lay there and worry. There's a lot of work going on within you. It's a natural process. The best thing to do is go do whatever it is that's calling you to do. For some, it is writing. All in all, it's best to just go back to sleep. If you can't go back to sleep, try playing music. I use an app on my phone that has meditation and by oral beats. By oral beats. It's very healing and I fall asleep and I fall right asleep. Lavender, melatonin, or even a quick glass of wine helps too. Tips from my 82-year-old grandma. Because you know what they say, a glass of wine a day is good for your heart. Also good for your nerves. Helps you to relax. 11. Feeling of sadness or deep emotions. Along this journey, you are experiencing intermittent feelings of deep inner sadness. Sometimes you may know exactly what, and you can release and replace it with love. Other times you may have no idea. This is something we all go through from time to time. While you, many, not always know while you may while you may not always know the reason rest assured it has a purpose you are releasing your past harbored negative energy as the emotions come up let them go and allow divine light to fill every space in every space it contains Every single one. Release that negative energy. Release it now. So that you can be the person you need to be. Happy. Serene. Content. Don't allow even a speck to remain. 
because you deserve the emotional freedom that's on the other side. Although this process can be difficult, embrace it. Bid your permanent farewell and be grateful for the release. Afterwards, your spirit will be lightened and you will be filled with even more love and positive divine. Let's conclude with 11 signs. 11 signs of spiritual awakening. One who is balanced in male and female energy and nurturing both themselves and those around them. It happens as one is growing through the process of discerning truth in the world around you and continuously reaching higher and higher peaks of awareness also known sometimes as simply getting it. It is what Maslow calls self-actualization. Carl Jung calls individuation and other the psychologists call a fully functioning human being or a complete self. This is both an internal and external sense of transformation that takes place like a butterfly, making the experience one that affects and is affected by the individual as well as all of those around you through a change in character, personal expression and kindness that is displaced. The purpose of this video is to talk about some of the stuff that people don't talk about and yet we go through. How do we explain it? I'm trying to focus on some of the stuff that people who experience this go through. So I'm going to list signs of spiritual awakening reported by those who have experienced it. It is important to note that these symptoms will eventually fade away after one adjusts to this phase of transformation. The first, asking questions about the world around you and the stuff that is taking place in your life. The second, changes in sleeping patterns to suit your need and requirements as a growing individual. Third, stimulated sensations like Random bursts of emotion that you didn't usually feel before, such as crying during movies. Feeling compassion and empathy toward those around you. Changes in body temperature or sudden random urges to go and do something like running, swimming, or climbing a mountain. Four, having great ideas and putting them into action. Seeing the depth of the truth, willingness to look beyond the tip of the iceberg, compassion on a bigger scale, and thirst for knowledge. Five, feeling pressure in different parts of the brain, such as the frontal lobe, which is the male logical and thinking part, or the back of the brain, which is more connected to the female, intuitive and space of connectedness. I don't know about you, but I know I had that. So now I know why. Six, the recognition of issues that have been denied, repressed, and avoided in the past and present may surface to be processed. In many cases, this may happen in relationships to someone or something which offers opportunity for growth for everyone involved in the vibration. Seven, changes in the body like looking younger and stronger, which also goes hand in hand with changes in the eating habits and lifestyle. Everything revolves around health. Eight, having personal and peak experiences where one feels at one and in peace her or his surroundings, having meaningful dreams and 
in-depth visions are not uncommon. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Nine, craving more and more to break free from tradition, outdated institutional thinking, blind conformity, and useless beliefs that do not serve the greatest good of humankind. Taking that craving and turning it into action, which, by the way, causes people to not like you, but be brave and take the chance anyway. 10. Seeing, seeing and comprehending the world in a way with deeper meaning, more and more awareness of synchronicity between the physical world and the feelings, thoughts, and energetic representation of the physical world. 11. Watching plenty of spiritual science and telling random strangers about it everywhere you go. Okay, that's one was special just from me, okay? So if you feel like someone who has been through spiritual transformation or is going through one, surround yourself with peaceful, aware, positive, healthy, and supportive people and circumstances. It is extremely important to take good care of both yourself and those around you. Be gentle and pay attention to creating a shift in toxic situations and relationships. Would you like to say the finished prayer with me? Father God, I recognize I am a sinner. I come to you asking forgiveness of my sins. I confess in my heart and speak with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son and he died on the cross for my sins. I confess Jesus as Lord of my heart, my soul, and my life. I accept Jesus as my personal savior and I praise you for making a way for me. I declare by the blood of Jesus that I am saved. I invite you into my life, Lord, and I pray you continue to reveal your love to me by your Holy Spirit. I ask you to have your way with my life. I thank you for the new creation you have made in me. In Jesus' name, Yahshua's name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many of these spiritual awakening signs are you experiencing today? Share this video with a friend. Pastor Catherine signing out.